All right, everybody, welcome to Friday Bible Study. And Justin, I uh, check your, I did answer all three and gave you those two videos. So just subscribe to uh, both of them. Yeah, subscribe to both of them. Good stuff. All right, so we're going to continue on. Daniel 11, that good old king of the north, king of the south. I've never had a problem reading this in New Living because it's about as difficult to understand as it is, at least until we get to the Antichrist stuff. Not sure that we do that this time around. After the enemy army is swept away, the king of the south will be filled with pride and will execute many thousands of his enemies, but his success will be short-lived. A few years later, the king of the north will return with a fully equipped army far greater than before, and at that time, there will be a general uprising against the king of the south. Violent men, men among your own people will join them in fulfillment of this vision, but they will not succeed. Then, then the king of the north will come and lay siege to a fortified city and capture it. The best troops of the south will not be able to stand in the face of the onslaught. The king of the north will march onward, unopposed. None will be able to stop him. He will pause in the glorious land of Israel, intent on destroying it. He will make plans to come with the might of his entire kingdom and will form an alliance with the king of the south he will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom from within but his plan will fail very similar to what we had read earlier after this he will turn his attention to the coastland and conquer many cities but a commander from another land will put an end to his insolence and cause him to treat retreat in shame i still think this might be the part where they're talking about uh, in the days gone by. And um, so we have not gotten to where I think it changes over to the Antichrist. Today we finished up at 18, right? Okay. Hang on just a quick second. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, I went and looked ahead just to, just to get clarity. And I had it backwards. It's the king of the north. That's the Antichrist. It's not the king of the south. So I have no idea why I got him mixed up. As I can tell you, I'm getting old. <laughs> 60 in July. I can't wait. But uh, yeah, so I read ahead and uh, just want to make sure. But uh, the king will return of great riches and yeah. So we'll keep uh, we'll continue to read. The king of the north will return home with great riches, you know, and then he sets himself up against the covenant and you know the abomination that causes desecration right there. That's the antichrist. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll continue on that tomorrow in the New Living, because in the King James, it just it's like a blur. Um, that's one of the most com confusing chapters. Well, I only read Daniel in the Old Testament. I don't read the Old Testament, but that is confusing stuff. That's definitely my toughest... Uh, aspect of understanding the book of Daniel if it if it didn't tell us um that it's the antichrist at the end with the abomination that causes desolation you wouldn't understand a thing that's going on and um and it's just very hard to understand what they're saying and how is is it all about the end times is some of it about days gone by um and then and then sort of it just sort of morphs into like these same kings kings of the north because i don't know we'll we'll continue to read it tomorrow it gets very 
confusing and it looks like the king of the north and the king of the south have just destroyed each other and it talks about another one rising so it's just it's very layered and very confusing to me i can tell you that um let's continue on in john 13 i will keep it in the king james by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have loved one to another Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, where are you going to go? Jesus answered him, where I go, you cannot follow me, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can't we follow you now? I'll lay down my life for your sake. And Jesus said, wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the, co the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice, three times. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also, in other words, I'm going to come and bring you to this mansion, which is the new Jerusalem, Revelation 21. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Remember, Jesus is the way. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, well, there he is. He's saying it there. This is that Bible verse, I guess. Whoops. It's very important to understand that he's the truth. And that he is the only way to eternal life. It's one of the most famous Bible verses that there is. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And didn't, just to throw some, some irony in there, didn't Jesus say, no man come to me except by my Father? Which is the exact opposite. Why is that? Because they're one and the same. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob morphed himself into the flesh and came to the earth and died and suffered and died. So um, no man, here's Jesus speaking, no man can come to me except the father which have sent me draw him. I will raise him up on the last day. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's continue on in John 6. We can go to 65, Jesus speaking. And he said, therefore, I said unto you, no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And here Jesus says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, it's like a figure eight. I mean, they're one and the same. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thirteen verses later, it clearly states, and the Word was made flesh. So, God, who was the Word, was made flesh. That's also in John <laughs> So we go to John Uno. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us so god was made flesh and dwelt among us 
I need to highlight these three because these, uh, Justin, speak to no. Where is my little highlighter? How come they wouldn't highlight for me? There they are. He came into his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him, he gave unto them the power to become sons of God. So he came unto the bloodline that he was spawned from, and they didn't receive him. But those that did receive them, to them he gave power to be sheep. And of course, they believed on him. And they were reborn. They were born again, not of blood, nor by the will, no free will, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, no free will, but of God. And we just read both ways. Not by, it's by Jesus, you get to God, and it's by God, you get to Jesus. <laughs> All right, love you very much.